Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephipha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You start out the day the same way you always do. You wake up and you think, is today the day that I can speak? No. Same old, same old. So you move on to your next activity. You go into the marketplace where there's the most people walking around, hoping that people might drop a coin your way. As you sit there and you watch them pass by one after the other, not even looking at you as if you've blended into this dirt and the building because you've been there for so long. No compassion is shown. Nobody cares. You look and you see the birds flying overhead wondering, what is that noise that comes out of their mouth? Or the dogs that run along the streets picking up scraps. No different of a day. But then something a little bit unusual starts to happen. You've seen it before, but a mob starts to create. But this time it doesn't seem like a mob or something where people are clearly upset, but people are all gathered together in one spot. This is strange. So you, you get up and you walk over there. You try to read people's lips, their faces, to see what's going on because you can't hear what they're saying. And then you see a man in the middle, and everybody's eyes are locked on him. So he must be important. But you start making your way through the crowd, and you try and watch him. And then you see some people that you know go up to him, and they point you out, and then you feel somebody grab your arm and take you over to him, and you're standing there right in front of this guy that's clearly of much importance. And what are you supposed to do? Can't talk to him. Just wave, maybe. But then he just smiles at you, and he puts his arm around your shoulder, and he walks you out away from the crowd, away from the commotion, away from all the hubbub, and stands right before you and looks you in the eyes, and you can tell that this man actually cares about me. This man, this man knows something. And then he shoves his fingers in your ears, and then he spits and then touches your tongue. And then you're thrown back by this, but then that thought quickly fades because then the instant rush happens. The sounds vibrating in your ears as you hear this man speak to you. The first words you ever hear are of the one who just healed you. And then you hear the song of the birds and the dogs licking up food off the ground and the people whispering to each other, wondering what just happened. And then you speak. And what do you say? What's the first thing you say? Thank you, probably. But this man before you, you have no idea who he is, but he just took away the biggest thorn in your flesh. So you can't help 
but thank him. Dear friends, today we are going to put ourselves in the sandals of this man who is deaf and mute. And we're going to walk out of here with the encouragement to both be opened in regards to our ears and to our mouth. In our text for today, Jesus was traveling all around Israel, not just in Israel to the Jews, but all around the areas that surrounded it, around those, to those different cities, preaching his truth, the truth that he is the Savior to all people. And throughout Scripture, we get to see perfect examples of what he does. And today, Mark gives us a window to look through as we watch our Savior pour out compassion on this man who needed it. We get to see our Savior care for someone. Someone who is stuck, stuck as a burden to society, stuck with feeling like nobody cared, that nobody was there for him. But yet Jesus takes time out of his limited time on this earth to individually connect with him. That's love. And we constantly see this love of our Savior. And he deals with this man with such care, this man who is an outcast, who we may seem as some random person, but to Jesus, this is a man who he knows. This is a man who is his heartbroken and struggling child. So listen again to Mark as he recounts this moment, which he saw. After he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Did you catch the tailored healing that Jesus provided for him? This man could not speak or hear, which are pretty crucial when you're trying to communicate with someone. So Jesus communicates him through a different way, through physical touch. As if saying, I'm going to heal you. And this is just such a cool way, a cool thing that we can see our Savior as he shows how much he knows this person. It's probably, to us, seems really gross and weird. But it is a unique, tailored healing. It's not hard to have compassion on people like this man or other people that are struggling, heartbroken. It's not hard to see them and want the best for them. But how quickly does that compassion sometimes turn into an envy? As we see somebody get free stuff when they're struggling with finances or people donating money. And maybe sometimes we think, well, I, you know, I could really use some money too, but here I am. Or we hear this story of this man and think, wow, that's awesome that he was healed and the worst part of his life is now over. But what about me? Where's my miracle? Where's my quick fix? Jesus doesn't come down and heal all my problems. Is it possible that we've forgotten the miracle that he's done on our ears? Let me explain. Since birth, we were deaf to God. We were deaf, spiritually deaf to his word, to his love. We hated him. We were enemies of him. We wanted nothing to do with him. We wanted only to do evil. But then, with the words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, those words were spoken, connected with water, and at that moment, Jesus brought you to the gates of heaven and said, this child is clean. This child is holy because this child is me. I have given them all of my righteousness, I have given them all of my perfection, and now it's theirs. So they will forever 
hear my love. And yet, after Jesus claims us as his own dear child, we go back and start acting like a child. We plug up our ears and start worrying and stressing about all these things in our life that pile up. And we conclude with the question, does Jesus even care? After all these things that he's done for us, and then we just go right back to that question, when people are dying, when health is fading, when your finances are falling, when the economy is failing, there doesn't seem like any hope. And we start not only not listening to his word, but then we start listening to other messages, to messages that tell us that you can do what you want, it's okay. Yeah, church is good and Bible class is good, but I've got some other things to do. I've got more important things to do. And we get in this mentality, this mentality that sin isn't that big of a deal maybe because I'm already saved, so. And then just like that, we're plugging our ears up again. But then Jesus comes to you through his word. He says, my child, why are you closing your ears to my love? Why are you closing your ears when I tell you how to live? Why are you plugging your ears to me? He says, I have done everything. I have forgiven you. For all those times that you plug me out, all those times that you forget about my love, all those times that you reject me, I have forgiven you for all of those. I've won the battle against Satan. I suffered, I died, and I rose for your forgiveness. I am in control. I am the one who created the whole world. Every star in the galaxy and every little wood chip on the ground was made by me, so everything that happens to you, I know about. And it happens to you for a reason, and the reason being that it is for your good. I am in control, and I love you. It's clear that he cares so much about you. So open up. Listen to the love of your Savior. Listen to the compassion that he spreads on you through his word, through loved ones, through your pastors. He's the only one who personally connects with you The only one who has a perfect care, a perfect love that will never leave your side. The creator of the world cares about you. The creator of you cares about you. Through this account, we see Jesus care for the hurting man. And we can conclude that Jesus has that same compassion and care for us. So now thankful that Christ has miraculously opened our ears to hear his love. We'll use that same phrase, be opened, to tell our mouths, to share the compassion to other people. Listen to what happened after the miracle. At this, the man's ears were opened. His tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. What would you do if your car or bike was broken? Right after it got fixed, you'd go ride it. You'd go drive on it. So how much more would it be for somebody who could not speak, could not communicate with someone, that now all of a sudden he gets to? 
He'd probably be running around all over the place trying to have conversations with everyone. Hey, what's your name? Oh, I love the sound of that name. Where are you from? Where do you live? What's your family like? Okay, got to go. Next person. Hey, what's your name? How are you? How many kids do you have? And just running around, yapping up a storm to everybody around him now that he has these new possibilities. It'd probably be, get, it'd probably be hard to get him to stop. But yet, that's exactly what Jesus does tell him to do. He tells him to not talk about it. Why would he tell him this? Well, it's not wrong to spread the news about Jesus. We hear that throughout Scripture, that that is what we are to do. But it's possible that in this account, Jesus does not want them to spread about him because they don't know who he truly is. To them, he is simply a miracle worker who has healed a person or somebody who is just there to deal with physical things. So he does not want them to be running around telling people that this is Jesus. He's the guy who just heals people. He's the guy who helps you out when you're, when you're stuck. He'll get rid of anything physical that you need. So what's the right idea to have about him? The idea, the truth, that Jesus is the Savior, the one who died, the one who rose. But they didn't know that yet because he hadn't done it yet. So even when they say he has done everything well, they have no idea how well Jesus was actually going to do things. <laughs> that he was going to make his way to the cross after this and provide eternal healing, spiritual healing for every single person. So, may our mouths be open to share that compassion because you know it. You actually know the message, the full truth. It's all written in our Bibles of everything that we need to know, that God has provided for us to know. So let's share it. Not just sharing physical compassion to people, although that is great, and that is also God-pleasing to do, to tell people To, to comfort them, to be there for them, to provide them with resources, with food, with clothing, and just be kind to them. But that only goes so far. Because when somebody is struggling with cancer or the loss of a loved one or finances and they're in the hole and they feel like there is no way out for them, you can't always fix those things. But what you can do is you can tell them that your sins are forgiven. That you can keep running this race, that there will be struggles, but that Jesus is in control and that he knows everything that you're going through and he is right there with you. And in the end, you have eternal glory awaiting you. Eternal glory that is already won for you. You already have the crown on your heads and now you're just waiting to enter into it with Jesus. So you can tell them this to build them up. Not just their physical well-being, but the more important, the thing that actually matters, their eternal hope. So be open, ears and mouth. Because Christ empowers you to love. You are the perfect example of what a Christian life is. You're in here listening to God's Word right now in church and in Bible class and throughout the week when you show love to your neighbors and friends and family. You are being who God created you to be, exactly 
who God created you to be. So keep on doing that. And remember that that is your identity. That's who you are. As we see the compassionate care of Christ, as he deals with the deaf and mute man and heals him, we can confidently say that he has healed us too. He has miraculously opened our ears and our mouth. And he has individually picked each and every one of us to do his work. So may your ears be open to hear the love of your Savior every day. And may your mouths be open to show this love, to provide comfort, eternal comfort, to all people that need it. And everybody does. Because you are perfect examples of what a Christian is. So keep on doing that. Because that's who Christ made you to be. So be open. Amen. We continue by...